Hi, I'm William Mattingly, back with the Medieval World, and in this video we're in Lagos, Portugal, and we're specifically in the Algarve, which is the southernmost region of the country of Portugal. In this video we're going to be covering everything from Lagos's prehistoric past, so this would be a period with the Phoenicians, all the way up through the Roman period, through the Middle Ages, and towards the early modern period. If you want to learn about Lagos and its early history, stick around for this video. I always say that the best way to learn about history is to get out and actually see it. But if you're watching this video, chances are you might not be able to, or maybe you're trying to find some information to go out and see it. Either way, in this video, I'm going to take you to some of the key locations here in Lagos that are just a short walking distance from the city center to get a good sense of the history here. We're going to be seeing the original geographical feature of the city that made it idealistic to early peoples, and this is going to be the point. Where we're also going to see an old Roman bridge, one of the few ruins that still remain in the city that give a glimpse of its Roman past. Finally, we're also going to be checking out a couple of the fortifications that lie within the city, including a medieval fortification erected by the Moors when they took over the city in the 10th century, and an early modern fort that defended the city from pirates during the early modern period. What we're going to be walking to first is the main point of Lagos, which is one of the most important geographical features of the city. Now, the reason why this point is so important is because it sticks out and provides a natural safe harbor to the city of Lagos, meaning that the early Phoenicians who first settled here would have been able to park their ships here in the harbor of Lagos because the point provided protection from bad winds and bad seas. And this is also what attracted the Romans to the region shortly thereafter. So what we're walking on right now is an old nature trail which preserves the legal right of way to the beaches of Lagos. Now the reason why we're walking through this, which I'll link in the description down below so you can find it too, is because this takes us to a very good point, very close to the city center, about an eight to 10 minute walk, depending on your speed, where you can see the point of Lagos very well with very little effort. I Meaning you don't have to climb too high or too long to get to something that's worth seeing. Also, you have some great views of beaches. So let's take a look at that area right now. You can see the point of Lagos behind me. Now this was the geographical feature that provided safe harbor to the main bay of Lagos, which made it possible for ancient vessels to park here safely, protected from both the wind and the sea. As the Phoenician power in the region waned, however, they were replaced by a new up-and-coming naval power, Carthage. Carthage is based in modern day Tunisia of Northern Africa, and they controlled much of the Iberian Peninsula. As we enter the 3rd century BCE, so this would be the 200s, Carthage is the dominant power in the Western Mediterranean. They have the best military, they have certainly the best navy. But by the end of the 3rd century, they're going to not have a navy anymore. And this is because of a new rising star in the Mediterranean called Rome. Now, Rome would wage three wars with Carthage. These are known as the Punic Wars. The result of the First Punic War is probably the most important, and that is the entire destruction of the Carthaginian navy, or at least the majority of it, and the rise of Rome as a strong naval power. Now, they achieved this through innovation and essentially kidnapping Carthaginian sailors and captains and learning how to see a sail from scratch. After the First Punic War, Rome would enter into a Second Punic War against a Carthaginian general named Hannibal. Now at this stage, much of the Carthaginian forces were based in the Iberian Peninsula. The result of the Second Punic War is the conquering of Carthage's Iberian holdings here. And that meant modern day Spain and Portugal fell into the hands of the Romans slowly but surely over the course of the end of the third century and the beginning of the second century BCE. So this would be the 200s and 100s. Now few Roman remains here in the city of Lagos. In fact, there's only one that I know about that's well preserved, and that is a Roman bridge, which would have led to an original Roman fortification on a small little island that juts out from the main coast. Now, this site is still visible today from a beautiful, beautiful beach right next to the city center. This means it's only a five minute walk away to see probably one of the best preserved Roman bridges I've ever seen in the Iberian Peninsula. As the Roman Empire started to crumble in the west, just in the west, they started to recede slowly but surely. Now, these regions that they receded from were replaced by peoples who were a hybrid of Roman citizens and what we call Germanic or barbarian peoples. Now, 
across all of Western Europe, this would be a different group of people in different regions. So you'd have your Franks in modern day France and Germany, your Angles, your Saxons, your Jutes in modern day England. But here in the Iberian Peninsula, so Spain and Portugal, you had the Visigoths. Beginning in the 8th century, the power of the Visigoths here in the Iberian Peninsula, and especially here in southern Portugal, would fundamentally change. And the reason for this is because of a series of invasions from northern Africa. Now, this is known as the Umayyad invasions. This would have been Arab and Berber peoples who would conquer most, if not almost all, of the Iberian Peninsula over the course of the next 100 or 200 years or so. As these peoples came from Northern Africa, they would conquer the local populations, including the Visigoths here in Lagos. And they would erect a series of fortifications to hold their new acquired territory. Now, no better is this demonstrated here in the city than right next to the city center at the castle of Lagos, which has all the hallmarks of a medieval fortification. It has a strong, thick vertical wall. It also has two major towers to control the main gate. Now, all of these are gonna be fundamentally different than a neighboring fortification, which lies just behind me, which we're gonna see right now. Now, beginning in the 13th century, the Reconquista here in the Iberian Peninsula, especially here in Portugal, was already well underway. And by the 1200s, the local population, which would have been Muslim, Arab, and Berber peoples, would have been almost entirely pushed out. And as the Kingdom of Portugal, who would be known come as the Kingdom of Portugal, came into power, they would fortify the fortifications here in the city. Now, as we leave the Middle Ages in about the year 1500 or so and enter the early modern period, which is going to go up until about 1750, we start to see a couple fundamental things change that require a different tactic for defenses, especially along coastal regions. One is going to be the rise of pirates, and two is going to be the invention of the cannon. Now, the cannon required medieval architects to redesign and rethink how you built fortifications. This is best seen in the citadel, which sits right next to the city center and just across the street from the old medieval fortification. Now, how is this citadel different? Well, it's different in a couple different ways. The first one being that it actually has slanted walls that are deflect cannons, which would have been coming from the sea. And number two, it also is much smaller in design. This marks a fundamental shift in Portuguese history when it comes to naval defenses, especially along coastal regions, and that's going to be smaller and more plentiful fortifications. This was best used to defend against pirate raids, which were quite frequent all along the Iberian Peninsula. That's going to be all for this video on the history of Lagos from the Phoenicians up through the early modern period. Hopefully you've got a lot out of it. Hopefully you have enjoyed the content and learned something new. If you have, like and subscribe down below. And as always, stay medieval, people.